I was looking at my phone and everything. And I was looking at my phone and I'm like, wow, my, did I mute myself? And then, and then, and then you made a comment on the, uh, about getting our toes run over. And I'm like, well, Wes heard me. And it's like, wow, that Richardson, what was he doing? <laughs> he had, he had the channels for the prayer line. The volume turned down. He didn't turn them up, and it was pretty funny. <laughs> well, with that being said, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> What'd you do, hang up? Oh. Good evening, and welcome to the Christian Truckers Network. This is a ministry that welcomes guest speakers to share their testimonies as well as the Word of God as the Holy Spirit leads. If you would like to be a participant, you can call in at 641-715-3580. Then they'll ask for an access code, and that is 401-080, then the pound sign. Again, that number is 641-715-3580, access code 401 401- Zero eight zero pound sign. And with that, once again, Tuesday night, welcome to the Truckers Prayer Line, the Lord's Round Table, and Christian Truckers Network, iHeart Radio, Spreaker, Spotify, however you're listening. Um, we're glad to have you here. That's another another night um, where Bishop Wes Fraser is going to be bringing us the word that the Lord has placed on his heart. Um, he uh, he comes here on Tuesday nights just for us, for us drivers, travelers, whatever you may be when you, when you tune into our network here. Uh, he just comes here special for us. So uh, with that, Wes, uh, you just let us have it. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> let us open in prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now for this day and the opportunity, Father, just one more time to come together and hear your word, Father. And Lord, we thank you right now, Father, for watching over each and every one out there, Lord, those under the sound of our voice, Father God. And Lord, I ask you to meet their needs, Father. Minister to them tonight, Father God, and pull down the strongholds and break every yoke, Father, in their lives. Lord, I ask you to bless their families and their children, Father. Watch over them, protect them, lead them, and guide them, Father. Minister to them, Lord. And Lord, we just want to say we love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. If you got your Bibles, open your Bibles to Deuteronomy, the first chapter, starting in the 29th verse. If I was going to title, I'd title it The Way. I would just say The Way. And a lot of times we, 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 we choose the way we're going to go. We choose the direction of our life. We choose the path that we're going to walk down and and. and in this saying of the way, I'm saying, do you hear do you hear the promises of God? Do you hear the word of God? You, are, you, are you listening to what the Holy Spirit's saying in your life? So in verse 29 of chapter 1 of Deuteronomy, it says, Then I said unto you, Do not be terrified, do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight, will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt and before your very eyes. And in the desert... There you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way. You went until you, you went until you reached this place where you are today. You see, and that's even in our lives. You know, God carries us all the time. And when we, we can't walk any farther, we can't go any farther, he, he carries us. You know, he, he, the Holy Spirit ministers to us. It strengthens us. And, and, and we need not to be terrified by, as we were talking before we went on the, the air, talking about the events that are taking place in this world and all across this land. I, it's, a, it's amazing how many things are happening at one time. We don't need to be terrified. We just need to embrace it and say, you know, God's will be done and all these things, you know. And, and, but as, as Moses was here, was leading the people, and, and they're, they're, they began to rebel against the Lord. And he was saying, I carried you as a son all the way to the place where you are today. In spite of this, you did not trust. In the Lord your God, verse 33, who went ahead of you on your journey in fire by night and in a cloud by day to search out the places for you to camp and show you the way you should go. 
He's always trying to take us in the way he wants us to go. But a lot of times our flesh, our desires, our wants, our understanding, our egos make us go in the wrong direction. And but we need to go in the direction that God is taking us. And when we do that, listen, he, he led them by, by, by clouds. You know, the, the clouds covered them during the heat of the day. The fire, pillars of fire led them by night. You know, the, the spiritual manna came from heaven. And the spiritual quail, Father, that the Lord sent in quail for their need. He, he sent spiritual water through the rock. But they still, still did not believe him. Never. Never did. The, the, and it amazes me as we walk through this place and, and as we walk through time, how many times has God healed you? How many times has God delivered you? How many times has he met your need? How many times in the middle of the night has he came to you and ministered to your heart when you were heavy? How many times did he protect you as you was driving that rig down the road? And, 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 and something happens, but it was just miraculous how he stopped that event from taking place and how he protects you and sent down his angels to minister to you. How he protects your family while you're gone and supplies every need. And when you're, when, you're, when you're at the end of the line and think, man, there's nothing else open, what am I going to do? He opens another opportunity for you to have a job. He opens another route for you. He makes a way available as we follow his way, his way. As Moses and them were following the way of the Lord, thank you, but he brought them out of Egypt. Here he's bringing them into the, into the, into the wilderness, leading them to the promised land that he, that he said he was going to give them. And, and he, he beat Pharaoh and held Pharaoh back. He touched Pharaoh's heart, and, 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 and the Pharaoh released him and gave him great wealth as they went on their way. He gave them fire. He gave them clouds. He gave them food. Or he protected them. He led them. He guided them. He kept them healthy and safe. Think about all that that they did, and then they didn't believe. Then they didn't believe. They didn't trust God. When you don't trust God, that means you don't believe that means your faith in God is, is not there where, where you think that he's the God of all the heavens and earth. And he's, he's my Lord and my Savior. He's my provider. He's my comforter. He's my peace and he's my joy. He's my healer and he's my deliverer. You see, our faith has to be there. And the way that we go and the way we approach God and the way we receive God's word and the way we, 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 we take it and we put it into our minds and we try to manipulate it or we try to figure it out, you know, we need to just say, yes, Lord, and, and understand that God is showing us the way. He's taking us in the direction he wants us to go, and if you really trust God, you should just say, okay, Lord, thank you. Whatever way you want to take me, I want to go. Whatever you want to do, I'm yours. You've been, I've been bought and paid for with a price, a price I cannot repay, so by the blood of Jesus Christ, I need to say, yes, Lord, show me the way, and he's showing us the way and a lot of times we're wondering, what happened? How did this happen? What took place? Well, how, did, how did I get the shape I'm in right now? How did I get the shape I'm in right now? To be able to find that, to be able to see what's going on, to be able to see what's taking place. You know, that's, that's the thing that we need to understand in all that we do. Finding the way, the way that God wants us to go. And Moses was searching that. In verse 34, when the Lord heard what you said, he was angry and solemnly swore, not a man of this evil generation shall see the good land. I swore to give to your forefathers, except Caleb. He will see it, and I will give him his descendants, the land he set his feet upon, because he followed the Lord wholeheartedly. Because of you, Lord, became angry with me also and said, you shall not enter, enter it either. But your assistant Joshua will enter, encourage him, because he will lead the Israels to inherit the land. And the little ones that you said would, not, would be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad, they will enter the land. I will give it to them, and they will take possession of it. But as for you, turn around and set towards this desert along the route to the path of the Red Sea. You see, when we, when we, when we hear what God's saying to Moses and the people and the generation that was murmuring and complaining. you got to realize when you back up a few chapters, you find out that they sent spies into the land. 
False spies went in. Ten came back with a bad report. Two came back with a good report. The ten that came back with a bad report so discord and, and, and unbelief in people's hearts by telling them, you can't take it. You, you're, you're not going to be able to hold it. They're, they're, they're giants. So we're like grasshoppers. And, and all these things have planted fear in the people's hearts. But they're forgetting the one thing that took place. During the way that the other fathers were walking, God said, I'm going to give you this land. It's a land of inheritance, a land of promise that flows with milk and honey. I'm going to give it to you and your descendants. See, they, they made a mistake. They, they forgot that what God's Word said. And how many times in our life do we forget what God's Word says to us, and then we push it aside, or we don't pay attention to it, or we don't take it to heart? And, and if we really took it to heart, we wouldn't forget the promises of God, because we know what God's Word says. And He says that that means it's going to happen. It might not happen in my time, and it didn't happen when they thought it would happen, but it was happening. You got to realize they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. They shouldn't have wandered but, a, but but weeks, but they wandered 40 years in the wilderness. And I always wondered, Lord, how come you made them wander 40 years? 40 years. In, in, in Numbers 14, and starting in verse, I believe it's 34, we see the promises of God's word. Matter of fact, it's verse 33. We see the promises of God's word, and it says, go to, and if I go to verse 31, As for your children that you said would be taken as plunder, I will bring them in to enjoy the land you have rejected. You have rejected. But you, your bodies will fall in the desert. Your children will be shepherds here for 40 years, suffering for your unfaithfulness until the last of your bodies lie in the desert. For 40 years, one year, for each of the 40 days you explored the land, you will suffer for your sins and know what it is like to have me against you. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will surely do these things to this whole wicked community which has, which has band together against me. They will meet their end in the desert. There, there they will die. So the men of Moses had sent to explore the land who returned and, and made the whole community grumble against them by spreading a bad report about them. And these men, responsible for spreading the bad report about the land, were struck down and died of a plague before the Lord. Of the men who went to explore the land, only Joshua and Caleb were able to survive what was put there. And when Moses reported this to the Israelites, they murmured, they murmured and mourned bitterly. Early the next morning, they went up towards the high hill country. We have sinned, they said. We will go to the place the Lord promised, but Moses said, why are you going? Why are you disobeying the Lord again? The Lord's commanded this will, this will not succeed. Do not go up because the Lord is not with you. You see, too many times, we had, we, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. But that's an example for us today to make sure we do get it, to make sure we do have the promises of God to make sure we don't fall short of what God is trying to do in our lives. You see, as we read verse, those verses, we find out that the judgment of Israel for their disobedience and belief is a serving to, to, as, as a warning to all believers. It serves as a warning to all believers. The Israelites had the good news. They had it preached to them. were redeemed by the blood, passed through the Red Sea, were baptized, ate spiritual food, drank spiritual drink, the living water of Christ, and were led by the Holy Spirit. In spite of this redemption and experience of grace, the people grumbled against God, hardened their hearts, rebelled against him, treated him with contentment, refused to believe in him, tested him. But you see, God gave them the land. He gave it to them to their forefathers. He said it's going to happen. But they, when they went to do it, they should have just walked into the land. God was giving it to them. He told them he was giving it to them. But they wanted to send spies in to see what the land was like and see whether it was safe. Or if God tells you to do something, walk into it. Don't worry about what's there. God is with you. When the Lord is with you, there's nothing can be against you. I like to say, who's crazy enough to come against you when you're with God and God is with you? You see, that's why they made a mistake. They wanted to send spies in. They didn't trust God. 
And for 40 years, they wandered for every day, every day as a year for wandering in the wilderness because of their disobedience, their lack of faith, their lack of trust in God. They wandered in the wilderness, just place after place after place, back and forth and around and around. They wandered in the wilderness and missed and missed the blessing that God has for them. How many times do we wander? We not trust God. We're out here wandering aimlessly, trying to figure out what's going on, and we miss the mark. We miss the boat when it came in. We miss the blessings when God put them there. You see, he says, I, he says, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't contain. A lot of times we're trying to figure it out, and we're at the boat dock when he's pouring out the, when he's pouring out the window in the mountain. You see, it don't make sense. But a lot of things, what we need to do is just say, yes, Lord, and follow his instructions and know the way. Know the way he wants to take you. Know the direction he wants to put you in. Know the path that you're going to go down. Because these are the things that, that direct and choose and, and mold and, and make your life. We don't have to have them. We can do it our own way. Moses and them did it their own way. How did it work out for the Israelites? Not too good. How did it work out for the spies? Not very good at all. How did it work out for Joshua and, 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 and Caleb? It was great because they had the report that we can take it, we can go, let's do it. Let's do what God said he was going to do. They were trusting God. They seen the same thing the other ten seen, but they knew what God said. They knew what their Lord said into their heart. So when God tells you something and he burns it into your heart and he makes it real and alive to you, you don't need to let go of that promise. You need to hold on to it. You need to keep the way that God is showing you. Not to try to make some new way. Everybody's trying to do something new. Everybody's trying to make a new way, set up a new path, begin a new ministry, a new way of preaching, a new way of teaching, a new way of singing, a new way of this and a new way of that. Why don't we just get back to what God's Word says? It worked for thousands of years, and it's still working today. We don't need the new, 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 new. We just have to have a renewing in our spirit and a renewing in our mind to follow God and make God Lord and King and, and let, let him lead us and guide us into the truth that he wants to take us. Too many times we, we, we put it off. You know, they fail to obey God's command and turned away from following him. Their disobedience brought them on and that brought on them was, was God's wrath. Death and destruction, failure to enter the land of Canaan, and, for, and forfeiture of God's rest. You see, based on Israel's failure in the desert, believers in Christ are exhorted to see it. That's why it's there. It's an example for us to see it, to follow it, to look at it. That none of you has sinfully unbelieving hearts will turn away from living for God. You see, when we look at that, that's what he's trying to do. Show us not to look away from God, but to look to God. Look to the promises and, 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 and not fail and enter into the rest that the Lord has given us and the faith and, and ultimately heaven will be our goal. You see, despite all these crazy things that they were doing, God was still performing miracles in their presence just like he is for us today. You know, let's take this here today. Let's, let's, let's drop back from, from in Moses' times to 2018. The Holy Spirit is still ministering to people's hearts. God is still directing our path. He says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It's a path he puts you on. It's in a direction he puts you on. And if we're going to receive from God what God has for us, we have to be obedient to the path that he set us on. There's going to be adversity, there's going to be trials, there's going to be temptations, there's going to be all these things that try to train wreck you and get you off the path, but you got to stay focused on what God's Word says. Satan will try to discourage you. He'll try to make it look like it ain't going to happen, but I'm telling you, if God told you it's going to happen, you need to believe it's going to happen and expect it every day until it's manifested in our lives. That's faith, believing and trusting in God. Believing and trusting in God. Or you can be like the Israelites and wander in their own directions, build their own gods, and, and murmur and complain and lose out completely on the promises that God has for you. Me, myself, 
I'm gonna. It, 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 to me, it's, it's it's a no-brainer to be able to say, you know what? I'm gonna follow God. I'm gonna trust Him. I'm gonna believe in Him. I'm gonna believe Him to exhort and 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 teach me the way that I should go for me, my wife, and my children, and my grandchildren, and and, and the church that I can take it in a path that He wants it to go in. You see, we can all get side, we can all get beside ourselves, and, and we can all doubt, and we can all murmur, and we all can complain. Because trust me, there's a lot to murmur and complain about out there. I'm not saying there ain't. You know, Satan is throwing attacks all the time. You know, you're like sheep headed for the slaughter, the Bible says. But the thing is, is you've got to know where your future is, and you've got to know who, who wins. Read the end of the book. You win. If you're a Christian, it doesn't matter what goes on in this world. Read the book. You win. He went through a battle. You still win. You leave this walk of life. As a Christian, you still win. You're a winner any way it goes, so why not just follow God and say, you know what, I'm going to trust the Lord no matter what, and wherever it takes me, I'll enjoy it. You know, whatever state I'm in or wherever I'm at, I'm just going to give God praise and glory for it and thank Him for what He's doing in our lives. That's what it's all about. The Israelites didn't get it. They, they, they just didn't get it, and they murmured and complained. Now, Moses had a huge task on his hands. He had millions of people out there he was having to deal with and take care of. But on the other hand, it don't matter if it's one or a million. Don't lose focus of what God has for you. Don't lose focus for it. Listen, there'll be the naysayers. There'll be a lot of naysayers out there that says you can't do it, why it shouldn't happen, logically why it won't happen. But if we walk by that, then we'll never receive something from God because God ain't logical. What he tells you to do, sometimes it just don't make sense, but it works because you know why? He's in control. When he's in control, that nothing can go wrong. It's when we become control freaks in our own lives and other people's lives that we have to run it and lead it the way we think, then we're wrong. And will not receive nothing of Lord. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and he shall not receive anything of the Lord. Double-minded means, yes, Lord, I don't know. Yes, Lord, I don't know. Yes, Lord, I don't know. I I'm saved today, sinner tomorrow. Saved today, sinner tomorrow. That's unstable. That's unstable. You're, you're, you're building upon sand, and it's going to come. The storms are going to come, and it's going to go away. You're going to collapse. And that's why it's so important not to be unstable, but to hold on to the promises and the faith of God. If the Israelites would have held on to the promises of God as they marched out of Egypt, giving praise and glory and honor to God, not get a few days' journey out and start building golden calves and everything else, but just held on to the promises of God's Word, saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, they all would have entered into the promised land. They all would have entered into Canaan. They would have ate the good of the land, the land that flowed with milk and honey and, and, and vegetables and fruits and all these things. They could have had it. They could have had it. But Satan got in the midst, and the ten spies that came back with a bad report corrupted the whole group, millions of people. To corrupted them, to turn from God because of what they thought. That's like today. People in churches turn against churches because in the church they split in their own houses, which is crazy to me, but they turn because of some naysayer, some backbiter, some gossiper, some slander who, who wants to just, just sow discord that, that, that's what the ten spies did. They came in and sowed the sword, and they died of awful plagues. The Bible says, dust your feet off and go on your way if you don't like the Spirit. It didn't say take everybody else with you. You see, Israel had, had it backwards. They messed up. And we, the, we, the body of Christ today, there's a lot messing up. God is wanting to bless his people abundantly. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Be living in those days. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself by listening to the naysayers, but listen to what the Spirit says. Get on the way that takes you to where Christ wants you to be. That's the road you need to be on. All these other roads lead to destruction. 
but the road that leads to where Christ wants you is a blessing. Enter into the presence of the Lord and let the Spirit of God lead and guide you. Take you to where God wants you to be. And quit listening to what other people have to say, but listen to what says the Spirit, the Word of God, that you can hold on to the promises of God. You see, we, we, we listen to what... We let fear come into our lives. We, we let anxiety come into our lives, and, and it begins to cheat us from what God has for us. You see? I tell you, go to, go to John, St. John, the ninth chapter. Go to verse 13. It's where the Pharisees are investigating the healing of the blind man. They brought to the Pharisees a man who had been blind. Now the day on which Christ, Jesus, had made the, the mud and opened the eyes of the blind was on the Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed it, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, or, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided among themselves. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had, had received his sight until they sent for the man's parent. Now listen to this. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now? that he can see. We know he is our son, the parents answered, and, and we know he was born blind. But how can he see them? Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. Years of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. They were afraid. Their son just been miraculously healed. Christ was taking them down a road of healing and virtue. The parents, in their fear, began to deny Christ, deny what God did, ask him. They were afraid. They were throwing their own child under the bus, to be honest with you. And then he goes on, for already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledges that Jesus was the Christ would be put out, put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, here's of age, ask him. And the second time they summoned the blind man. And he began to give glory to God. You see, the blind man was blind, but now he can see. He was on a path that was, that was a path of, of bitterness and, and, and destruction and, and pain and sorrow. But then he followed the path of Christ, the ways of Christ. And Christ healed them and delivered them and set them free. The Israelites, Christ was healing them. God was healing them. He was setting them free from from the bondage of Pharaoh. When they came out, the parents denied that, that how, how it happened. They said, ask him. He's of age. Ask my son. I didn't want to get in trouble by, by saying he was Christ. But the Israelites went out and built golden images and, 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 and casts and all these things and false and pagan gods to worship them instead of following the path that God put in their path. And they fell by the side and died in the desert. They miss their blessing. Guys, ladies, don't miss your blessing. Don't miss your blessing. Don't wander in a place you don't have to wander. Trust God. If they wouldn't have sent the spies and just walked into the land, they would have took it. God was with them. They won every battle from the time they left Egypt to that point. But God said, I'm tired. I'm tired of the unbelief. I'm tired of the rebelliousness. I'm tired of it. Don't let it get to that place in your life. But follow Christ. Follow the road he's laid before you. You know, Psalms 37, 23 says, The Lord knows our ways, and he delights in our ways. He knows our thoughts. But he ain't, we're, we're, we got the choice to choose. So I had people say, well, why don't he just, why don't he just keep you on that path? Because why don't you just choose to follow the Lord? Why would you have to be made to do something 
for somebody who's done so much for you. It's like telling a person who bought your house or bought your truck or tractor and trailer, set you up in a business and say, hey, man, can you give me a ride to the next town? Oh, no. Oh, no, I can't do that. You see, Jesus set us up for, to, for success. And he's saying, hey, follow this road. And a lot of times in our life, say, oh, no, we can't do this. We want to go this way. And he's saying, go ahead, see how it works out for you. But the path you should take is this one. If God is dealing with your heart tonight, and you've been going through some circumstances and some situations where you didn't know which way to turn, but you know God's spoken something into your spirit. Rebuke the devil and follow the spirit of the Lord. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and no other voice shall they follow. Follow the voice of God. Follow the one that lines up according to the word of God. Follow that one. And let God have his way in your life. Let God have his way so that you, as a child of God, can reap the benefits that God has for you. That you'll not fall short, but you'll receive exactly what he has for you today. You see, all it is is saying, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. It's that simple. But Satan makes it so hard. He puts stuff in your path. Well, I've got this. I've got that. I've got this to do, and I've got that to do. I've got this to do, and I've got that. Listen, the only thing you've got to do is follow the Lord. Jesus said, I'll be your healer and your deliverer. I'll be your comfort, your peace, and your joy. I'll be your provider. Uh, you know, listen, I'll fight the battles. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You know, if you'll just say yes and follow Christ, your whole life, your whole life will change. Am I saying it's going to be a bed of roses? Absolutely not. There will be bumps in the road. There will be battles to fight. There will be things to take care of. But when it's all said and done, the rewards are out of this world. The benefits is out of this world. You see, and even in this world, there's such great benefits, such peace and such joy. I'm telling you, just say yes. Just say yes, Lord. I'm going to take the way that you show me. For me and my house, we're going to follow you, Lord. And wherever it takes and wherever it leads, that's where I'm going to go. If it don't make sense, don't worry about it. Keep following if your mind says, I know a better way, no, you don't. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way. Follow the way. Follow that road. And let it minister to your hearts and to your family. Let the blessings of God flow from generation to generation in obedience to Christ. With that being said, I just want to say, you know what? Let God make his way known to you. Psalms 103 and 7 says that. You know, God makes every way perfect as we listen to him. You see, and, and that, that's, that's, there's such blessings. And, and you're blessed when you walk in his ways. You're blessed when you listen to his voice. You're blessed when you come into his presence. You see, that's why it's so important that we push away what man is saying and hear what the Spirit is saying to his people, to the church, and to you individually. Because it's a personal relationship with Christ that he said, draw an eye to me and I'll draw an eye to you. I'll be your God and you'll be my people. Let us pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you right now, Father, touching each and every one out there tonight, Lord. Lord, if they don't know you, they'll come to know you. And, Father God, this way I'm talking about is the way you laid out for us to go, Father. The way you've directed our paths. The way you, you, you minister into our hearts and to our spirits. The way, Lord, you tell us to come. You say, go here, go there. And, Lord, I just ask you right now, Father, that your hand be upon each and every one, Lord. Lead them and guide them, Father. Open their eyes to the truth, their, their knowledge, let it expound, Father God. And Lord, I just give you praise and glory and honor for all that you do and all you're going to do and all you have done. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Take a short pause here for a second, and uh, when we get back uh, to comments and questions. We would like to invite you to tune in to Smokehouse Studios Front Porch Show. We're live Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time. We discuss current events and Bible prophecy and how it all relates into the days that we find ourselves in today. You can find Smokehouse Studios Front Porch Show by searching for it on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Spreaker Radio. We also invite you to tune into our website at SmokehouseStudios.net. There you can click the radio show link, and on the radio show page, there is a player there to hear our shows as well. They do podcasts, so you can go back into the archives and listen to our past shows. Tune in Saturday evenings at 6 p.m. Central Time. an awesome word brother awesome word thank you brother Uh, um you were saying i I just got a question you you said uh uh, about let god uh uh, have god let us know the ways of our path how how would you recommend that we go about doing that finding the path or or say that again well you, you, you referenced towards the end of your message there in psalms about having god let us know his his his, his presence. Um, I think I, I think I'm I'm going down the right road with this. But um, how 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 would you recommend that we do that? Would we would we pray and, and ask God to show us His ways? Um, find out through His Word, fasting, prayer. Um, what do you recommend? All of the above. All, okay. all of the above. You you pray and you ask God. Sometimes we fast. Some only come out by prayer and fasting. When we're not getting, when I'm not getting an answer that I know I need, and it, and it, and I know that I need to hear close to God. I'll fast. I'll let my spirit be cleaned up. I'll get into His Word and I'll seek His Word and I'll study His Word every day. But but still, I pray and I say, Lord, show me the path. Show me the direction You want me to go. See, a lot of people's waiting for the, a big boom or something big and violent to take place. You know that that ain't that ain't it. It's 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 the being able to. It's being able to hear that small voice. It's being able to know that 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 push in your spirit that says, "I'm I'm speaking." You know what I'm saying? Knowing that it's God. That's why He says, "My sheep hear My voice, and no other voice shall they follow." It's because we're supposed to know the voice of God. We're supposed to be close enough to God that we can hear His voice. And understand his ways, and and that's what it, that's what it takes. Just being that close to the Lord and, and hearing His appearance in our lives. That, Amen. That's what, I, that's what I'm going to say. I tell them. You know, how do I hear from God? I pray. I ask God. I seek His face. I seek His direction. Uh, I fast, and sometimes I say, Lord, I, I need clarity. I just fast, and I and I listen to what the Spirit of the Lord's saying. You know, you know, as I listen to yep. your message, I hear submit. You got to submit to it. You got to. You got to follow. See, if we don't submit, if we, if we don't submit to Christ, we're submitting to something. If you're going down a path, or if you're going down a road, or a way, that's what a way is—a path or a road or a direction. If you're going down something, you you had to choose that road. Why did you choose that road? If you're going to do something, why did you choose to do what you're doing? Did you search it out? Did you find out if it's biblical? Did you did you did your spirit know that that it's right that that it's, that's pleasing to God? You see, a lot of times in our lives we don't want to take the time to search out what God wants in our life. We just want Him to give it to us like a microwave. Bam! I don't want to put any effort into it. I just want to know it. I don't want to. I don't want to have to seek God and pray. I just want Him to heal my body and, and, and fill my bank account. You know that ain't the way it works. We got to seek after the Lord. The Bible says, "Ask, seek, and knock." To find the direction that God wants your life to be in, you know, you have to listen. You have to be sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord. 
And, and a lot of people don't want to be. I mean, they just don't want to be. Listen, listen, listen to this here. This is talking about, maybe this helps. This is talking about Elijah. Remember when he was having a pity party? He was the only one. And I'm the only one left, Lord, and they're out to kill me. And, 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 and he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broke down your office, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rock before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he was pulled his cloak over his face and went down and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? You see? And then God tells him there's 750 others waiting for you down there, Elijah. You see, but it wasn't in the fire, it wasn't in the wind, it wasn't in the earthquake. It was in a small, still voice. A small, still voice. Amen. And sometimes we just have to get quiet before the Lord to hear that small, still voice. It's hard to hear the small, still voice when you're shopping, when you're playing baseball, when you're watching football games on TV and they're just screaming and yelling and you're going crazy. Sometimes you just have to stop. Stop. Just bow your face before the Lord and seek Him with all of your heart. And then that small, still voice begins to speak into your spirit. See, Elijah was looking for and all these other things. First of all, Elijah had to get out of the pity party he was in. Woe, woe is me to find out that God is still alive. He's still well. And a lot of times we have to do the same. We have to get out of that pity party that we lay in and, and, and you know, lick our wounds and whine and cry about and just understand, get up, man. Pull yourself up. Dust yourself off. Get, in, get out there and pray and seek God. Get at the foot of the mountain. Get at the top of the mountain and pray and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. And just be determined not to move until God speaks to you. Sorry, brother, that was probably a little more than what you're asking. But no, 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 amen. No, that's good word. Good word. Yep. Because, you know, sometimes, like you said, sometimes we're waiting for the microwave to go ding, ding. You know, we pray, and 30 seconds later, it's like, Okay, God, or yeah. Well, what's up with this? <laughs> you know, and <laughs> I see it. And, and it don't work that way. I see it all the time. Just like people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they'll come up there, they'll raise their hands, they'll, they'll be there for two minutes. And I've had people say, "Well, I guess it ain't for me." So how do you know? You ain't been. You, you, have you sought God? Have you were seeking God? Are you seeking the gifts? You were wanting to come up here, somebody lay their hands on you, you go speaking in tongues, and, and that was it. I said, no, that ain't the way God works. It's not the way God works. Nope, amen. And and the problem with that sometimes is is that they're seeking the gift more than the giver. That's exactly right. They uh, they get way ahead of themselves. Well, it, it wasn't for God's purpose; it was for theirs. You say, amen. Yep. You know, I, I find that um, our God is a is a God of perfect timing. Um, you know, when we were down in, in Iowa at the truck show, you know, God God used me to prophesy to a a young man. I didn't I, I don't ask for I didn't ask for that gift of prophecy, but um, I, and why did God give it to me? Maybe because we were there. Why didn't He give it to Steve? I don't know. God, God, give me that gift at that time to tell that that person what what um, he was seeking. Um, you know, that's one of them instantaneous answers to a prayer that that God does. Um, you know, this gentleman asked if if he was wasting his money and his time by sending his grandson off to uh, off to a Bible uh, camp, and um, you know, his his prayer was that. 
he wasn't. And um, Steve just said, well, come back here. He says, do you mind if we pray for him right now? And the grandfather's like, no, by all means. And as Steve was praying, we both put our hands on this young man. And, and as Steve was praying, all of a sudden my mind just went completely blank. And it was like I was sitting at a drive-in movie and I could see this. This young man preaching to a mass of people. And, and uh, you know, I, I, there was no doubt in my mind it was the Holy Spirit. Not even an ounce of doubt. Um, you know, you could just feel the presence of the Lord so strong in our booth at that time. And, and, and then I revealed that to, to the grandfather, you know, I didn't, I didn't ask God for that gift. Um, and I don't seek the gifts, you know, I've, I've been baptized in the Holy spirit. I, I can pray in tongues. Um, but I, I, I don't, I don't seek the other gifts, but, um, I just thought it was so awesome that God used me to do that. You know, I got so blessed by that. Not as blessed as my grandfather did, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but that's what it's all about. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you didn't hear a big rumble. The building didn't collapse. It was just a nudging in your spirit, and there you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, it, it don't take much for my mind to... Oh, and it's, the, uh, and it's the Holy Spirit that's got a hold of it, you know? It's... It was cool. I mean, uh, you know, Steve and I were standing there praying together, and I, I, I could feel the presence of the Lord so strong. And and when we were at the races this last weekend up in uh, Brainerd at the NHRA, is one of the chaplains there. Um, he's uh, taking care of his grandson because of just problems in the family um, with his son and <clears throat> everything. Anyway, um, he had a guy come up to him here a while back and said. You know, I, I I don't know about this, but he said, as I was walking by you, he said, the, the Lord has told me to come and tell you this. He says, I don't I don't know what's going on, but, um, and, and Craig wasn't even in his, his uh, racing uniform or nothing. He's the Racers for Christ head chaplain, but he said, there's something about this young man um, in racing and ministry, he said, and, and, uh, he said that God's just got a calling on that young man man's life there to to uh, be an evangelist to, and and Craig was like, whoa, you know, there's no doubt about it because this guy didn't know that Craig was involved with racing ministry, but you know. God showed this guy, uh, you know, a race car, whatever it was. I don't remember exactly how the story went, but anyway, it had to do with racing and and ministry and. Um, and God was just confirming to Craig, uh, you know, I don't know if he was looking for confirmation on what, but um, he's an awesome man of God. And and God was just showing him, hey, you know, you're you're more than likely where I want you to be, you know. So it's just, and, <laughs> you know, and that's Steve and I were talking about that earlier today, Wes, about, you know, the, we were talking about just about exactly where you were preaching on today because we're in the book of uh, Judges and the, uh, and uh, the morning Bible study on the prayer line. And, um, you know, it was, we were doing a little timeline study this morning afterwards. And, and from the time Joshua died to, uh, um, or to, from the time they got their land allotted to them, to when Joshua died, it was about five years according to the timetable. Time and, and we're in Judges 2, and already God is telling the people that you guys are doomed because... You are now worshiping idols. I mean, it's so incredible how them people got to live and see the miracles that God did. Great miracles. but I mean, which miracle ain't great, but I, you know what I'm saying? I mean, where they seen the, the Red Sea open up and the, the Jordan River separate. And, you know, they, they got to see some amazing miracles. Um, people... Um, that they went up against battle with, you know, um, and God warned them, you know, if you don't kill all these people, you better be careful because they're going to infect you with their bad seed. And it, it didn't, it didn't even take five years and they're already infected with their bad seed and worshiping idols. You see that, that's, that's why I'm saying, are we people today 
people today are a lot like the people were back in Israel. I mean, in the, in the Israelites back in that time. You know, they, they see miracles happening in their lives. They hear the miracles that are taking place all over this, all over the land. But they don't, they don't hold on to the promises of God's word. You know, it's not just for somebody, it's for everybody. Christ died for everybody. And all we've got to do is be faithful and recognize the Lord in all that we do. And, and I don't understand. I don't understand why people can't do that. I just, I just don't get it. It don't register with me. You know, even as a young convert, I used to think to myself, why don't people just do what is right and follow God? You know, and over the years, 40 years in pastoring, or 30-some years in pastoring, it's been, it's been like, wow. You know, people don't change. It's like Groundhog Day all over again. I mean, you know, the same stories, hear the same stories and the same thing over and over and over and over again. And in my mind, I'm thinking, when are you going to wise up and recognize the, recognize the tricks of the devil? He's been using them for thousands of years. And we still, still don't recognize it. Yep. 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 The tactic is the same. It hasn't changed. No. And we're still falling for it. Yes. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. I'm like, wow. Yep. It's crazy. Oh, it's, it's, crazy. Good word. Truthfully, it's crazy to, to think about it. But, you know, it's like people just keep doing it over and over and over again. And I'm like, man. Yep. Man, oh, man. Yep. You see people at the altar, probably in your church every week, asking for God to forgive them for the same sin they asked for the week before, you know? Yep. Yep. And you're like, I guess, what happened? Well, on my mind, I'm thinking, why wasn't last week good enough? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because your desire and your lust for the things of the world is greater than your desire and your love for God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, everybody else, anybody else want to comment? Questions? We got we got the preacher here. Now's the time. It's like a marriage. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> there you go. Well, you know, all I got to say is an awesome message, and it always is the right message at the right time. You know, God knows the heart of each and every one that's listening, whether it be on the conference lines or whether it be by radio. And he puts that message on your heart to bring. And, you know, there's there's something every time. It, it's just amazing. We serve an awesome God, don't we? Amen. Ooh. Amen. Well, gentlemen, if there's nobody else out there, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to go get me some dinner, and I am going to kick back. It's been a long day. <laughs> I was uh, I was going to say, I bet Miss Joyce is uh, bringing that dinner bell back there for you. And and uh, once again, Wes, we sure appreciate you, Steve said. It's great to have you, and we've got a few listeners on tonight. I guess uh, they're chewing on what you said or moving their... Trying to get the air back in their toes. Either way, it's all right. Just let God minister to them. And I apologize Amen. for my dog starting to bark. I don't know if you could hear it or not. But I I didn't pick it up. She, she heard your voices. <laughs> and she heard a voice <laughs> and, and she went nuts. <laughs> like, where is it at? I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Want me to bite him? <laughs> Well, I appreciate it, gentlemen. And uh, you all have a blessed night. And may the Lord speak to you and bless you all the way home. Amen. You as well, brother. Thank you, God.
See you Tuesday. Absolutely. You have a blessed week, brother. You too. Bye bye. I'm going to sign off of here, Todd. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, ten more. Good word. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. I gotta. I'm. I'm still on this headset. Let me call you right back. Okay, bye. And there we are. <laughs> yeah, he's always got a good word. There ain't no doubt about that. Definitely blessed by him coming on here every week like that. I wonder what his deal is. Yep. Yep. I think he's got more than that going on. Because he don't go to nothing no more. Every now and then you hear him on the Bible study, but not often. Yeah, I think he's got a lot more going on than what he's talking about. But if he don't feel comfortable and confiding about it, there ain't nothing you can do. I don't know. You know, he don't go to 21 neither, so it ain't like he's playing favoritism. <laughs> Man, I've been buying these, um, you know, where you cook in the bag, microwave in the bag. I bought one, threw it in the microwave. It ain't one of the bag ones. It ain't one of the microwave bag ones. Doesn't matter to me. It's a bag deal anyways. But anyways, it's all good. So is my garlic, shrimp, and vegetable and noodles. The only thing I'm missing is slanted eyes. You know, I forgot about those. No, I know they are. Yeah, I live on them things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I've had them. I liked uh, 
I get them without the frosting on them. I don't like that frosting. And uh, I usually get the strawberries. Yeah, that's the ones I look for. Because I, I don't like that frosting. They're there because I get them every week. Yeah, I've seen those. Where you got the different berries. Don't get the peanut butter ones or the pumpkin ones. They suck. Big time. Nope. Especially the peanut butter. They're nasty. And I love peanut butter, but yeah, they're just flat out nasty. Yep. Yeah, Mari don't like them either. Yeah, if a kid don't like them, forget it. He likes them cookies and cream or the s'mores. But then I introduced them to cream sickles. He said, Papa, you can forget about buying me all that other stuff. You just keep buying them cream sickles. Yeah, he loves them things, man. Then one day I said, Mario, you ever try a fudge sickle? No. Well, let's get a box of them, too. Shoot, man, that kid tears them up. Oh, yeah, we've been down that road already. Then we went to Dairy Queen, and every week we'd get a different flavored milkshake until we went through all their milkshakes. And now he's working on the Sundays. Or the, not the Sundays, those ones where they tip the, yeah, where they tip the cup upside down. Yeah. I know it. That's what I tell him. He goes, give me a large, Papa. I ain't getting you no large, dude. I can take a loan out. Yeah. Nope, I don't eat those. I, I just tear up the milkshakes. I got a milkshake today, man. It tore me up. Right? There you go. I didn't think about that. Right, right. I didn't think of that. I heard that. Hey, who was on your line tonight? I was looking for Wayne. <laughs> I heard that. Yep. As long as you keep talking about it, it's going to keep lingering around. Racist stuff. You keep throwing it up in Facebook, it just keeps that whole the whole uh, attitude going. At least that's my thought. You know, am I saying that if you ignore it, it'll go away? No. But why keep the fire going if you don't have to? Watching these guys out here, this guy's helping. This guy's got a truck almost jackknifed, trying to back it in. Then there's a guy out here, he's wiggling his finger in circles. And and the guy in the truck, from where he's standing, probably can't even see him. Then the day when I was in here, there was two ladies in a truck. I forget the trucking company, they're out of Wisconsin. She's standing out there with a dog on the leash, smoking a cigarette. And there's another gal in the truck trying to back into a parking spot. And they're blocking everybody coming off the fuel island. And it's like, really? You know, why don't you go in the back part of, of the parking lot? 
or go across the street to the Petro where there's a million open parking spots and you can play over there all day but you're going to do it right here at the fuel island we got to wait for her to figure out what she's doing before we can get out now there's two three trucks lined up trying to get away from the fuel island <laughs> I know it's like really I'll tell you the pro no no you got to hear this one I'm over there in New Newton Falls, right? <clears throat> and I went into that, that little truck stop I stay in. <coughs> a PGT truck, or PGI, you know, flatbed. Their, their parking lot where the fuel pumps are and where all the customers are and the gas pumps are, it's all cement. Where the trucks park, <coughs> it's gravel. And it's been run over, beaten down for years. And we've had a lot of rain. So there's some there's some puddles in that here and there, and the dirt's a little bit muddy, but it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not where you're sinking in it. It's not, it's, it's compacted. This guy pulls up, blocks everybody, and goes inside and orders his lunch. We're all sitting there looking at him. Finally, I snuck up alongside him and was able to back into a parking spot. But there's guys on the fuel island waiting for him because they got to come off the fuel island and make a big left to go out the parking lot. He's right there. He comes out with his lunch, gets up in the truck, and then backs into a parking spot and sits back there and eats his lunch. He blocks everybody because he didn't want to get his boots dirty. Oz tick, Todd. I, I backed in. He wasn't blocking me no more, but I, I, I was so ticked off. It's like, really? You didn't want to get your shoes dirty? So you hold all these people up? But Todd, even if you said something to him, what would he say? Screw you, mind your own business. You're not going to get through to people like that. If he was a kid, if he was a young teenager or something, you, you could possibly train him. But this is a grown man. He was probably stupid from birth and carried it all the way through life. <laughs> I know, I know. So anything you said to him, what, 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 what would you have gained out of it? It would have went right over his head because as a grown man, you know, he should know better, but he didn't see nothing wrong with what he did. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then I'm like, man, just, it ain't none of your business. Shut up. You know, because the guy that he was blocking, he didn't say nothing. So he wasn't blocking me. I was able to 